Here is a lung. Here you can see parenchyma, anthracotic pigmentation. Here, 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 and here you can see rather good sized bronchi. And here, probably here, here, you see thin blood vessels, probably veins. And maybe this little bit thicker thing could very easily be a pulmonary artery. You could see a lymph node here. But look at this big bronchus here. That's the thing in question. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Uh, we can see that it's filled with something red and irregular, isn't it? So let's take a microscopic view of something that would encompass both the normal mucosa as well as leading into this obstructed area. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And that's exactly what we have done. Take a look at all of this cartilage that represents the normal cartilage you see around large bronchi. Uh, also notice in a relatively normal area here, you are seeing the kind of mucosa you normally should see in bronchi, which is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. There's a subepithelial group of uh, uh, mucus glands there. There's part of the cartilaginous wall. And you can see occasional whitish goblet cells here more often than you can see here because uh, here are some non-goblet cells with cilia. And as you know, the goblet cells do not have cilia. Let's go from this normal area and uh, go into the area that had the obstructive lesion and try to find some kind of transition. Well, once again, I think you could still uh, confidently say there's maybe, oh, some inflammation here. It's hard to say whether the mucosa is really still very intact or not. Now you're kind of to see kind of a mucosa that is no longer <clears throat> pseudostratified. It looks truly stratified like squamous, doesn't it? And if there's any doubt about that, you could clearly see a squamous mucosa here. But in addition, you could see that it is not a normal squamous mucosa. It is not normal squamous metaplasia. It is a typical metaplasia or dysplasia in which there are uh, a lot of darker irregular cells throughout. Well, uh, if you were hoping that this carcinoma would be limited to the uh, western part of the basement membrane, that would be nice because that would make it a non-metastasizable carcinoma, wouldn't it? But unfortunately, it looks like there's little nests of these cells on the other side as well. And certainly, if you remember, we had a big obstructed uh, lesion there that we saw grossly. And here you can see little nests of tumor here. It's now clearly infiltrative. There's nests out here. There's nests out here infiltrating the smooth muscle of the bronchial wall as well. This is an infiltrating, moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Why do I call it moderate? Because it's not the worst and it's not the best one I've ever seen. But in really why I call it moderate is that in extremely well differentiated squamous cell carcinomas, you can usually see squamous differentiation to the point where you can actually see pearls of keratinized material. So pearls are the hallmark for a well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. In poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, the tumor nests may look so poorly differentiated, you can hardly even realize that they're squamous anymore. But in this case, you can see that they are clearly squamous. In addition, if you have good eyes and you look at some of these little spaces here between the cells, and I wish I could zoom higher, you will notice tiny little connecting strings called intercellular bridges, and that is the hallmark of a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. And of course, in this case, it's infiltrating, isn't it? Thank you very much.